Mark Urban there. Now let's take stock of what a moment this is. Joining us here, Martin Amis, the novelist who lives in New York and has been writing about Donald Trump for Harper's Magazine recently, and Ann Coulter, the conservative writer and broadcaster and author of the book In Trump We Trust. And it's lovely to have you both here. I hope you're not freezing. And you sit here today genuinely excited about the prospect of a Trump presidency. Talk us through that. Um, well, what Trump did... I I mean, both political parties left it wide open for him. He's not a Republican. He's not a Democrat. He, and luckily, he didn't need the donors and the lobbyists for the money to run his campaign. So it's, it's just like he saw a $1,000 bill lying on the ground, and he was the only one who would pick it up. For every issue, endless wars in the Middle East, um, job-killing trade deals, and most of all, open borders and just the out-of-control illegal immigration and legal immigration system, he comes along and takes the most popular position, which is why they keep going after Trump for his personal baggage. It's not about Trump. It's never been about Trump. It's about his issues, and it's the people against the ruling class. So you class. think it is his personality that has really sold you on him, then? He's I think I just said the exact opposite. <laughs> but you're talking about his populism. And I'm talking about his issues. Okay. No one is voting for Trump because of his personality. They are no, voting not even for Trump you. because of his issues. And that is the interesting thing, Martin Amos, that when you ask people who concentrates on issues, most people think it would be Hillary Clinton. She talks about policy. Trump is the one that actually talks about issues in terms of how they affect people, right? Well, I, 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 I've never seen anything very coherent from Trump on any issue at all. Um, he has made it, because his personality is so repulsive and overwhelming, it, it, that's all there is to talk about. I don't think, can you remember a single soundbite apart from building the wall? I mean, he, he hasn't got any uh, detail. All he's got is, is, is an attitude. Uh, the, the fact that that attitude is speaking to a lot of Americans is a, a great interest and concern. But um, I don't. I don't see him commandeering the issues question. I think he's he's just he's giving a presentation of the wonder of Donald Trump, and he thinks that'll be enough. I couldn't disagree more. I have a whole chapter in my book. I because every time when I since Trump announced, I'd walk in to get coffee in my kitchen, and I'd see someone on TV saying, "Oh, he has no policy specifics. He, he doesn't do no nuance. He doesn't know the facts. Will we get specifics?" He's the only one give us, giving us specifics. When I went through and read through the primary debates, and that's after watching them both twice, he, luckily he doesn't have that politician's trick of saying people are frustrated and describing the problem. He just he answers every, everything directly. We do know what he'll do with the border. Yeah, he'll build a wall. Yes, he'll have extreme vetting for Muslim immigrants in particular, or immigrants from countries that have been producing all of these terrorists. Um, he's gone through the order of deportation. He'll start with the felons. Then he'll move on and to the ones who are arrested. That's then the critical, ones who are on welfare. It? He will he then attack just two more issues that are, I think are important. He doesn't want to get involved in another war in the Middle East. He did oppose the war in Iraq. And thirdly, the most important issue, I think, I mean, also there's the, his attacks on Wall Street, which is right. Let but me the just trade come in, deals, what, what he's, also he's done. the only one who has run for president who's against the tr okay. Trans-Pacific I want to talk about trade These deals. Are popular he's also, issues. He's also raised the issue of race, hasn't he? He's made it, a, he's made it possible for people in America to talk about race if they don't like something, if they want to protect themselves first or their community first. You disagree? No, I don't think it is about race. It's about Martin immigration. Names. It's about the nation. We can assimilate anyone. Um, but look, we're talking about Russian immigrants too. They're white people. It's immigrants generally. Yes, we can assimilate them, but not in the numbers Martin we're names. bringing them in. It, it, ra race is um, one or two or three on the list of what they care about. Trade comes in around six or seven. That's a sort of fig leaf for for these xenophobic atavisms that he's. What he's had is a, a disinhibiting effect on America. Um, for a while, people felt there were certain things they couldn't say, and he's led led the field in in ripping all that away and saying, you know, say what you feel, be as uh, crude and buffoonish as I am. 
And is that healthy? Is it better no, to know what America actually does feel about the people he, that, that share the shown, country? He's shown us a, a great deal about America. None of it is, uh, is pretty. But he has revealed, he's revealed things about, for instance, the Republican voter, that they don't really care about abortion very passionately. They certainly don't care about, uh, about gay marriage very, very passionately. Well, they do, uh, and they don't like it. Well, well, but not enough. I mean, they don't care about whether you're divorced, whether you pay taxes or not, whether, whether you uh, harass women. They don't care about that. We've had a great wave of racism while Obama's been in the White House. Now prepare for a great wave of misogyny. Um, and uh, we, we've already seen it for years in for, for and course, the last 18 months. And would you accept that, that America has become more racist under Obama and it has to prepare to become more misogynist <laughs> no. under a Trump presidency? No, no. I think these are all just the slanders. Like I say, instead of discussing the issues, and Hillary did, did call the Trans-Pacific Partnership, I don't know if your viewership knows about it, but it would take any jobs that haven't been shipped to Mexico and ship them to Asia. Since in the 1980s, we Can had more than... Can I promise you we'll come on to the trade question in one second and okay. discuss Clinton's place. But just but answer that question. But that's an issue. Yeah, but just answer the question of racism and misogyny within the Trump No, campaign. these are slanders because they don't want to talk about what I keep trying to talk about and you keep cutting me off from talking about. It is about the issues. That's what people are voting for. It is about trade. It is about jobs. Um, and okay. yet they throw all these crazy slanderous so, so Marjorie, charges Ms. at Trump. You and American Democrats are completely wrong to focus on the race issue or the misogyny issue. Why don't you look at Hillary Clinton changing her position on TTIP? She's clearly worried about this. Bernie Sanders has raised the issue of anti-globalization and he's tapping into something that strikes a chord. Um, yes, but I think that that's, that, that is all um, minor. I mean, what happened with when Obama became president, with, with certain people thought, oh, we can relax a little bit about race. But what, what that has done is awaken a nascent racism in America because the fallback position for every white man has been, I may not be much, but I'm better than any black man in this country. And they look at Obama and they suddenly realize that they're not anymore. And the whole prestige of being white, working class, heterosexual has, has melted away from them. They're called the left behind. Um, so you are sympathetic to that or not? Sympathetic to? Well, would you say that, that those people are racist or is that the wrong word you should use about people that well, you are left behind? When it comes, well, let's take the deplorable question. Uh, Hillary Clinton said his half his supporters were the deplorables. Um, and the politician can't say that, but we can. And um, would you, with a straight face, say that Donald Trump isn't deplorable? You think um, he's not to be regretted? No, I you think... You don't he... blush when you see him. No, if I can answer, no, I think your sneering remarks about white men, why do you have to turn everything into race? Again, Trump and his supporters care about the country and the issues. And as for white men feeling like they're better than blacks, um, I, I submit that, and that's what the evidence looks like now, but we'll find out within 24 hours if I'm right. I've been taking bets on it all year. I will bet you Donald Trump gets more of the black vote than any Republican since Richard Nixon, or you don't have black people rushing to the polls. The idea that this is whites trying to oppress blacks. No, it's Americans against the ruling class, because for people like you, immigration is a triple. You get cheap servants, you get virtue, and you get someone to... To, to stand Lost between Lost you Lost. and and the, the, the hordes. It's, it's great for the ruling class. It's not so We're good for people who are competing for those jobs, including blacks, including Hispanics, Lost and, Lost and Lost. some well, white men. Well, some white well women. Um, the, the black black question is, is the essential question in America. I mean, let's not forget you had a civil war about this, and 650,000 of you thought it was worth killing each other, either to abolish it or to maintain it. After that, you had another century of Jim Crow and, and segregation. And it was not until okay. a century after the Civil War did we, you make any progress We will at all. be carrying this on on Facebook with a live discussion, but that's all we have time for tonight. We'll be back in New York City tomorrow. We'll have a special program on Wednesday, Results Day, from Washington, from all of us here. Good night. Thanks for watching.
Okay, here we are. And which Republican candidate <clears throat> has the best chance of winning the general election? Of the declared ones right now, Donald Trump. <laughs> Well, what about of all of them? I mean, Scott Walker. Laughter from the audience. Um. <laughs> Two women.